Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a reading called Are They My Soulmate? This is for the winner of a recent giveaway and her name is Emily. Thank you so much for entering and for watching my videos. I'm shuffling my cards because so, when I do a video reading that is available on Etsy, I let you see um, as I'm pulling the cards and getting them ready. So that is a little bit different than my YouTube channel because they're normally already pulled. <laughs> so what I do is I get into the energy of the connection. I do feel this connection and your energy overall is really focused on this. Now, in some ways, that is not always a good idea. What this means is that you are like every aspect of your life is kind of focused around you figuring out this, this question and, uh, wanting this person to really be your, your person. Now that's fine. That's, that's, it's fun to dream and hope and wish, but you want to make sure that you, well, these cards just completely flew out. And two of them actually came out for this one. So I'm going to, uh, give you both of them. I love giving a lot of information, so we have that. <clears throat> and then the last card is a tarot card. And then, so because this is like my um, readings that are on Etsy, you're also going to get three bonus cards. I'm going to throw pull the Moonology cards. So just to let you know which cards we're using today, we are using the Mystic Monday Tarot, and then I'm using the Energy Oracle cards. And then I'm using the yes, no oracles of yes or no from that are my deck. So we're going to get started on this. I, the energy is all over the place. Uh, I feel that you want a relationship. I feel that some of the messages that you got when you were younger were that, you know, you want to grow up and get married and be with a person and be with this person forever and they will help you. They will make things work out the way you want, you know, and I, I feel like you have kind of focused on in on this energy of a soulmate as an answer to your questions when actually bringing in a soulmate can sometimes bring up more things that need to be healed and need to be fixed. So I feel, let's go ahead and we'll work on question number one. Is this a soulmate? Yes, absolutely. When something is absolute, there's nothing wrong with charging forward. Now we have multiple soulmates in our life. Soulmates can be romantic. Soulmates can be, your, your mom can be a soulmate. It's someone who is connected to your soul. It's like a group of people that always work together in different life cycles. So it's showing that this person is a soulmate. It doesn't necessarily mean that this is a romantic connection, but it does mean that this person is part of your soul group. Now, the reason that that's important is because a lot of times that means that you have had past life experiences with that person and you are working on healing some of the past or you're working on creating new futures. You're really connected to this person. And I sense that you knew that when you met them. Uh, I sense that you are um, alert to things that are happening in your life. So yes, this person is a soulmate. And I sense that you already knew that. I feel like you met that. <clears throat> I feel like you knew that as soon as you met them, like that was one of the things that kind of like drew you to each other. So then question number two is, do they know that they are your soulmate? No, anger, past experiences have clouded the issue. I really, really sense that this is anger from a past life. This doesn't, or past experiences. So some of it is past life, which is obviously it says past experiences. Some of it's past life. And then some of it is their own experiences that they have had with other people prior to meeting you and without knowing you. So they, this person has some anger that they're dealing with. And this anger sometimes stops them from getting what they want. And in this case, it could stop them from pursuing a relationship because of the anger that they have. 
So the next question is, will it be what I want? Yes, no doubt. Your unwavering faith has made things go in your favor. Now, when this card comes up, it usually means that the person who's getting the reading is doubting that it could be what they want it to be. So this is not a, a thing where they're saying, oh yeah, no doubt. It's saying don't have doubts. If you have doubts, you're pushing it further away from you. So this person is a soulmate which is the, the question that you had, is this person a soulmate? Now, this does not answer for us if this is going to be a romantic type of soulmate. You can have somebody who comes in and they're there for a brief moment to heal the past issues, or maybe you help them heal their past issues and then things move forward. So I would not sit there and say, oh, you're my soulmate and dig my heels in and say, no matter what happens, I'm staying in this because that's not how life works. We are supposed to vibrate with the next right one. Sometimes the next right one is years. Sometimes the next right one is, a, you know, a 20 minute date or something. So this, even though this reading is saying that, oh, this is your soulmate and things will turn out the way you want. I feel like sometimes the way we want is that love and acceptance. It doesn't mean forever. So I, I just want to be really clear because I really feel that you need some of this insight because if you get the idea that this is a soulmate and that guarantees that the two of you are going to be together, you're going to be severely disappointed because life is not guarantees. Basically the energy for the, the connection builds as it goes. So you have a foundation of being soulmates. You have a foundation of things working out the way that you want. Now, your person has free will, which means that if they don't work on this anger, a connection won't work with you. So this is not saying, and I feel I need to reiterate this, this is not saying that this is a romantic connection. This is saying that this is a soulmate. So we need to be clear on that. Soulmate relationships can grow into something that lasts forever, and soulmate relationships can be very short. So let's look at your current energy because two of cards came up. So I feel like there's a lot of energy around you. So the first one is anxiety. Now I feel like some of this anxiety is because you want a relationship and that's not, there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody wants some type of human connection. We are a communal species. We want someone to be there. And I feel that you're kind of having some anxiety around this connection because you are putting an expectation on it. So you are saying, oh my gosh, we match, we match, we're compatible, we're compatible. This could be a really good thing. But instead of really going with the flow and seeing where, the, where it develops, you're trying to pinpoint it figure out what it is. What is this? What am I, can I be happy yet? Is this something that's gonna, is it too early to be happy? No. Happiness solely relies on you. Like your own happiness. It doesn't matter who is in your life. You could have a person who had a tattoo on their arm that said, Emily, I am your soulmate. We are supposed to get married and live happily ever after forever with no problems. There could be a person with that tattooed on their body. But if you're not loving yourself and you're not ready for that connection, it's not going to work with whoever you end up with. So part of this is saying, yes, this is a person who is supposed to be in your life. Yes, this is a person who's a soulmate. That's why you feel that connection. But you're putting a lot of anxiety on it because each time you have an interaction with this person, you're labeling it. Oh, today he answered my text message really fast. Today was a good day. I'm happy. Oh, I haven't heard from him in two days. Today is a bad day. I'm unhappy. That is conditional happiness, and it's based on someone else's actions, and that causes anxiety. So if you're really able to go into this connection and say, regardless of what happens with this person, regardless of the outcome, I'm going to choose to be happy. I'm going to say, my happiness is not based on this person. My happiness is based on me. And if they do something that doesn't you know, excite me, or if I feel like their energy is waning, I'm not going to let that affect my happiness. I'm not going to, because if you sit, see her, 
what is she doing? She's sitting around looking, you know, by herself. She's not with her friends. She's not doing her own hobbies. She's not creating things that she wants. She's sitting there worried about that person. So I'm going to pull a clarity card on this because it zoomed in. Okay. So you really need to get to the point where you're like so excited about your own life and doing your own things that this person is just kind of a nice byproduct. They're not your sole focus because that's creating anxiety for you. So then let's look at this other card because you had two energy cards come up. Wow, victory. Wow, that's beautiful. I'm so proud of you. So now you're getting a lot of clarity cards because usually when we change our energy, there's a story, there's a message, there's something going on. So I'm pulling cards as it's zooming in. Okay, so victory. So what I, I really felt you uh, connecting with some of the messages. So I feel that you will be victorious over the anxiety that you have around relationships in general, not just this relationship. If you can get to a point where when someone comes in your life, you're like, oh, they're here for a reason, a season, or a lifetime, and it is not my job to decide which one of those categories they fit in. The universe has decided that. I'm not the director of the play. The universe is. It's not my job to assign roles because I'm not the director. I'm a role in someone else's life as well. So then this one is, what do I need to focus on? So the first one is, oh, the Ten of Cups, which, so the Ten of Cups is really the energy of like family and reunions and love and support. It's often seen as a, a marriage connection or a family connection. So the biggest thing about that though is, so each cup is an emotion. Each cup is a part of your life. And if you're only trying to focus on one cup, you're not going to have the whole big picture. So you have to become a multifaceted person who is not focused on the anxiety of a relationship because they have the victory of knowing that there are other cups. If this person is making you feel anxious, go do your other thing. Go write in a journal. Go write about what it was like in quarantine and make a million dollars. <laughs> so you just need to focus on other pieces of your life. So then the clarity that came up with that was the reverse princess of pentacles. I'm going to hold it up so you can see it. So the reverse princess of pentacles in the um, Mystic Monday is the uh, page of pentacles. So this is about some bad advice. And I feel that you have people in your life and they're saying, oh, he, he left you on red. Oh my goodness. What? You have to stop talking to that person. Like there's somebody in your life and actually they're, they're jealous and this person is giving you advice that they they think you want to hear or, you know, they're like, oh, I'm, I'm concerned for you. And this person might not be the right person. I would, <clears throat> I have learned in relationships that you don't talk to other people until it's already done. Guess what we did? We went on a date. It was so much fun. It was great. Don't tell them the, the bad piece. Oh, I haven't heard from him in five days. Well, then they're going to try, they're, you know, they're going to be like, oh, well, he must not want you. But if you know that the reason you haven't heard from him in five days is because you have victory because you're spending time on your other cups, then they're not going to let them get you down because they are causing you to have some negative energy. And when you vibrate at that negative energy, you're going to connect to it. So then the third card is showing as the reverse two of swords. Now, the reverse two of swords is about some confusion. It's about getting mixed signals, which is kind of what you're having. You're having work on yourself, do these things. And you have this, this person, this friend who's coming in and it's causing you to have confusion. Sometimes you are happy with the small thing and you decided to be happy. And then this person comes in and is like, that's not enough. So I would really try and figure out who that person is. So then the other clarity cards that came on this one, which was, will it be what I want? We have the Six of Wands. Now, the Six of Wands energy is about victory. I love, love, love when there is some um, places where you see... What's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> um, synchronicity. Synchronicity. So you you have victory, and that really is coming into the... This is the what do I... Will it be what I want? 
it's going to be a growth relationship or growth connection, like not necessarily a romantic. It could develop into romance. I'm not saying that that's not a possibility, but it's definitely down, down the road. Once you've done the work, if you continue in this energy, no relationship guaranteed. I can tell you, if you continue in anxiety, you will not have a relationship with this person. So the other clarity card came up as the death card. Now the death card does not mean the physical death. Um, the death card means big changes. I'm really, it's really interesting. Let's pull, wow, you've got a lot of things going on here. Let's pull another clarity card. This one is the nine of wands. Now the nine of wands energy is about boundaries. It's about persistence. I feel that you are going to really make some good changes. I feel very proud of you. I feel like your spirit guides are proud of you. I feel like some of this has already been brought to your attention, but now there's clarity as to how all the things fit. So work on the victory over the anxiety about this certain connection and then work on figuring out what are my other nine cups? family, hobby, you know what I mean? What else can I focus on? And that's really going to really, really help catapult you into this victory energy. Excellent. You're doing really well. Let's go ahead and I'm going to do um, three bonus cards because we that's what I do for a reading on Etsy. And we're going to pull from Moonology cards, which will just kind of give us some closing statements when it comes to the situation. I feel your uh, eagerness and your excitement at having answers and having a direction in, in which to go. I'm really, really happy for you. Let's see what these cards are. We'll pull a third. Okay. So your first uh, moon card energy says... <laughs> A new romantic cycle begins. Look at that. You moved the energy. I'm so proud of you. Uh, it says new moon in Libra. So, wow, you're doing really good. Even See, that's what I'm saying. Like energetically, we can change the future. The future is not set in stone. So there are some experiences and some timelines where you're together, some where you're not. Like you're lining up with the romantic cycle that you want. So message number two, ah, time to breathe out. Now breathing out and breathing in general really helps with that anxiety. So if there's things that you're kind of finding your brain connecting to and anxiety that you find yourself having, take a big, big breath. What I do is four breaths in, hold it for four, and let go for four. So when you find yourself in this um, energy of trying to figure out what's next or trying to figure out what's going on or wanting the new romantic cycle to happen right now, you know, take a breath. Take some time to meditate. Take some time to ask yourself what you really want. Take time to connect to your spirit guides. Listen to your intuition. There's a lot of things that this time, and that could be one of your cups as well, one of your cups could be meditation because when you're meditating, you're not focused on that person. You're focused on yourself. And when you stop focusing on this person, you're going to become much more attractive, attractive to them. They're going to be like, where did the attention go? She was always there. She was always eager to know what I said. And just, I could feel her waiting on my every move. And, and now she's not, what is she doing? What's more interesting than me? I really want to know what is she focused on that's not, what has her attention? <gasps> is she talking to another guy? Oh crap. What if she's talking to another guy and I lose her? Like you're not making yourself interesting when you're always there, always available, always ready. What do you want? He knows he can just not pay attention, not be there. But when you start shifting your energy to other things, you're so energy is like money. And what you pay attention to, you purchase, you get into your life. So you, right now you're paying attention to him not talking to you or not being that person as much as you want him to be. Them to be, sorry. I'm assuming it's him, but I should not be doing that. I apologize. So then the last one says, look at the bigger picture. Full moon in Sagittarius, which is very interesting as well because I sense that the bigger picture is that when you become your own soulmate, when you become the person who is a priority to yourself, 
you are going to be a magnet for other people who put you as a priority. And I sense that you know these things, but had not had a clear path of how to get to what you want. Thank you so much for entering the giveaway. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to reading for you again.